Hi, this is Michael Canales of Green Tech Media, and the algae business has exploded in the past couple of years. There are now over 20 companies that say they're going to grow algae and turn it into oil. Now, some of the companies are already coming out of the pack, and one of those is Solozyme in South San Francisco. Let's go check it out. That's a, a 42 gallon standard barrel of oil. Now, what is why algae? I mean, when people first hear this, the first reaction is, no way, this can't work. You know, if that were possible, we would have done it 150 years ago. Well, uh, I, I think the, the main misperception on why it wasn't done a long time ago is, is the idea that algae is like farming. Algae, growing algae efficiently is, is not really like farming. Mm -hmm. uh, growing algae efficiently is really a biotechnology process. And there are biotechnology uh, methods and biotechnology um, know-how uh, that are required to really make oil from algae efficiently. And those are the things that have only just now started coming into existence. The last time you filled up your car, you filled it up with uh, gasoline, probably. I don't know. What yeah, gasoline. gasoline. $50, $60 of gasoline. Yeah. 50 <laughs> or 60 bucks of gasoline, which came from a barrel of oil, which originated more than likely with an ancient algal bloom. Most people think it was dinosaurs, yeah. but it was algae. It looks right. better in a sign, big brontosaurus. It looks much better, it was dinosaurs, but it was actually algae. So what we do is we take this process that kind of nature has been evolving over billions of years, and we condense it, and by feeding the fruits of indirect photosynthesis, that carbon, to the algae, and they take it, and they can turn it into oil in just a few days. What makes Solozyme different? Rather than grow algae in ponds, the companies identified species of algae that will grow by feeding it sugar. By putting algae and discarded plant matter into a brewing kettle, Solozyme effectively can cook up algae without the sun. Sugar is more expensive than sun power, but here's the difference. If you grow algae in ponds, you have to get rid of the water somehow, and that's a problem that's vexed scientists for over a decade. In a kettle, you don't have any water. The bottom line is that, uh, because it's not intuitive, intuitively you would think, Let's grow on sunlight, sunlight yeah. is free. Um, but the, the productivity, okay, the, the, the oil productivity is so much higher when you grow on a fixed carbon source through fermentation uh, that even after you factor in buying that sugar, uh, you're still far, far cheaper uh, to do it the way that, that we do it. Although transportation fuel is the biggest market, Solzheim also wants to sell oil to people who make cosmetics and food. What is that right there? This is a cosmetic oil that includes a compound that our photosynthetic algae make yeah. to protect themselves from the sun. So they, they, they produce these really, really amazing compounds that actually are made to protect the algae from all the same things you need to protect your skin from. You got 48 hours to live, you know? Yeah. You don't want to be fried yeah. too quickly. Yeah. This soap was made with our mm -hmm. oil. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Oops, it's a bar of soap. It's a, a nice bar of soap. It works great. Uh, the brownies right here, which you should try, and I'm about to try. Uh, we these, try them every time. These were cooked, by the way. This brownie was cooked with no oil, no butter, and no egg. All of the really? oil, the butter, and the egg were replaced with our algae that make oil. And it, it's a highly nutritious oil that has the profile of, of, uh, of uh, an olive oil. And this, this oil right here is actual oil that's been extracted from the algae. So, you know, essentially it's a similar profile uh, to olive oil. Uh, it tastes great. Uh, it's got some other things in it that olive oil doesn't have, like some carotenoids. And, uh, you know, this is this is essentially a you know a food. How about uh, like some of your customers? Have they profiled consumers saying, you know, "Would you buy algae oil?" Sure. Or you know, are you gonna think it's like Charlton Heston soil and green? <laughs> hey, that's that one's gotta come up. I've heard that one before. Yeah, I think we both heard that one before. Um, uh, I think that what we found is, and it's it's interesting. What we found is actually a much wider penetration into kind of public. Uh, of the idea that al algae is healthy than we thought was out there. Okay. And I think that, truthfully, uh, there are a bunch of companies like some of those natural juice companies yeah. that are making like green energy drinks that have algae in them, plus in cosmetics, the idea, general idea of using algae has been around for a while. So what we've gone out and found, and actually we're dealing with potential partners who have gone out and done focus group testing, is that people are much more amenable to the idea than we naturally would have thought. There are a couple other things to like about the company. It's got a research partnership with Chevron, 
and it's actually produced oil, which is a lot better than most of the algae companies out there. It's also got stable management. Founders Harrison Dillon and Jonathan Wolfson met the first day of college back in the 80s and have been friends ever since. That helps. Microsoft and Google were also founded by college friends. I'm Michael Canellis for Green Tech Media.